Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette here with the next video, and this one's going to be focused on Town Hall 9s because Town Hall 10 got so much attention post update with the big Inferno Tower change and everything. Uh, but Town Hall 9, taking a look at um, how it's changed, not a whole lot besides the fact that Town Hall 9s can now occasionally three star Town Hall 10s. It's going to be these low level Town Hall 10s, and it's typically going to be using La Loon of all things. That is what we're seeing work for 9v10. Um, we're also going to take a look at some other meta attacks at Town Hall 9, as well as some Ice Wizard usage at Town Hall 9. So um, there's going to be some more Town Hall 9 attacks after this one, but I want to start with the one as advertised, which is that 9v10 three-star. So nice. Um, good job to Forbidden here. Uh, COC Magic pulling this one off. Basically, what it, what it typically looks like is it's going to be a suicide hero coming in to get... Um, an air defense, some good value um, just from other defensive buildings like Archer Towers, Wizard Towers, um, but very, very small troop investment just using some wall breakers and wizards basically. Um, I think one hog, I'm not sure what the hog's for, I forget, um, but just going to move the king through to, to tank for the queen basically and also tank for those wall breakers. He actually gets some pretty good value because the queen doubles back to the wizard tower, but then she double doubles back to actually get that air defense. So it gets like a free wizard tower as well that he probably wasn't even planning on getting. Uh, pops the queen's ability, she'll grab the archer tower as well. Doesn't get the queen and also doesn't have a skeleton spell, but you have to get some luck for this to work. I mean, it's a Town Hall 9v10, so luck has to be involved for sure. And in this case, it's going to be some nice, I think, loon drops and also some pups to get on the queen and take her out. So that's one thing that uh, the nines often have to rely on, um, but that's just part of how it works. So these nice haste spells to spread them all out, um, moving those loons so quickly through the base here and then has a heal spell for the back end. But really, this wasn't even taking advantage of the Inferno Tower change because it was a multi-Inferno, but he didn't heal through it. Um, the damage is the same. The heal was for later for this back end area, and uh, the Loon Pathing was just great. I think I missed it um, as I looked away, but the, the Loon Drops, I believe, took out the Queen right there because she's standing on a bunch of like Teslas and stuff. Uh, so she goes down pretty easily to those Loon Drops. Takes a bit of luck, but that splash damage will do it occasionally. And um, this one is a successful three star. Uses some of these wall breakers to lure the hound to the corner, at least as best he can. Um, but it's not going to be an issue. He has so many loons, they'll take out the base anyway. So we'll fast forward here. This one, I believe, came down to the wire. Like there was half a second left. Uh, cleanup took a while because the pups got stuck on the king and they get stuck on the lava hound. So there's a bunch in that red air bomb. Almost uh, ruined this attack. So um, almost became a 99%er, but worked out. Nice attack. That's how it's done typically is the suicide heroes, the, the La Loon, with typically some luck, luck involved. Um, oftentimes it's the queen kill was a little bit lucky. So let's move on um, to some 9v9s here. And these are going to be our attacks starting with number 32. This war, as you can see, is still going on. So should be a good war. Uh, Forbidden definitely came out strong. They've used more attacks, but um, they are picking up a lot of 10v10s. So regardless of the outcome, you guys will probably see some 10v10s from both sides in an upcoming video because there's some fun stuff to show. Um, but this attack, pretty much what you're going to see, two golem, um, two heal spell, that type of composition um, for hogs at Town Hall 9. That's kind of what's working right now. It's kind of that sweet spot. The Ice Wizards are so nice. Look at the value this Ice Wizard is going to get. It'll get up and take out that Archer Tower as well. So they're mixing them in with regular wizards for the funneling allows them to get in there, get those defenses taken out, which is what you want your wizards to do. But the ice wizards do it so much quicker and so much more efficiently because they'll step up and target that defense before anything else. So um, ice wizards are very, very useful. Um, and they, I think they're a little bit overpowered actually at Town Hall 9, but that's beside the point. Uh, they'll be gone soon, um, I'm pretty sure, as all these temporary troops are, the giant skeleton, uh, which I have seen a little bit used as well. Um, but the giant skeleton I don't think is as effective as the ice wizard is. So that's that's how you do it. You basically clear out the core with that kill squad, the two golems, the bowlers, the jump, and the rage is enough, along with your heroes, of course. Then about 
18, 20 hogs or so in two heal spells can take out the rest. That's typically the optimal balance we see between kill squad and hogs is having the two golem bowler CC investment with the two spells and then leaving two uh, heals for about 16 to 22 hogs, somewhere in that range. That's kind of what we're seeing ideally. Look how low that Lava Hound is, by the way. Um, very, very low on health. Uh, we'll fast forward for sake of time. Um, what was I saying? But if you have lower level heroes, you probably want to go a little bit stronger on the hogs or go a little stronger on the kill squad, one or the other, whichever seems better for the base. Um, I have talked about in the past, big kill squads are good for low level heroes because you can bring extra damage troops to make up for the damage your heroes can't do, such as um, more wizards, Valks, Pekka, stuff like that you can also bring to do the damage. Um, but you can also go very light, just do some suicide heroes and then bring a bunch of hogs, assuming those are maxed out. So you can you wanna mix it up if you have lower level um, heroes. Let's move on though to our next attack here. This is a nice Queen Walk La Loon. Now, of course, Queen Walk's got a huge, and Queen Charges, I guess. Anything with the Healer Queen combo. Got a huge buff at Town Hall 10 with the Inferno Tower change. Um, not a whole lot changed at Town Hall 9 for Queen Charges, but I like them. I like showing them because they're, they're effective and they're more reliable if you're good with the Queen. They're more reliable than some kill squad based attacks because the, the queen charge is very very powerful um time is your only issue but if you kind of get things starting simultaneously by the way a very nice ice wizard while the cannon was being tanked ice wizard on the air defense gets it taken out regular wizards probably would have gotten it but it's so much more safe using that ice wizard um i wish that was a temporary troop that would be a very cool troop very useful for these little jobs you have to do but i'm um, like I said, I, I assume it will be gone soon. Um, so the queen's gonna take out that Lava Hound. The king actually comes inside the base. He'll get a few swats on the defensive king, or at least one swat on him there. Or maybe not, I can't tell. Uh, but he at least cleared out that compartment, so it makes it easier for the queen charge. Oftentimes, that's what the job is of your king, is just to kind of clear things out for your queen. A um, little bit low on time, but that's why there's the 11 minions. This attack, um, which you guys might be familiar with, it's been used uh, quite a bit recently, and it's been around for a fair amount of time, is where you come in with this kind of light La Loon on the back end. I guess I shouldn't say light. It still has two Lava Hounds and quite a few Loons, but you have a bunch of minions to drop behind, uh, and you drop those right away, and the minions will start taking out these buildings. So the cleanup time is very low because the minions work fast, especially if you have a lot of them. Yeah, plus you have the queen still working ideally, so that's a bunch of cleanup that you wouldn't otherwise have in a typical La Luna attack, um, which makes it makes it doable with a queen charge, which which otherwise would take up too much time. So here come the loons pushing through the base. Unfortunately, that one sweeper is causing a little bit of issues because uh, the queen couldn't reach it from where she was. But the queen got good value. He got the uh, uh, one air defense with the queen, the other one with the kind of the king wizard thing there. Uh, but he got into the core took out the defensive queen, and oftentimes for these defense targeting attacks, like I say, clearing out the core is important because it allows you to kind of have that nice half circle uh, pathing for your loons or hogs, which is ideal for spell placement and for keeping them up as they move through the base and take out defenses. So a ton of troops left up. I'm not sure how time was. I forgot to take a look at the beginning of the attack. I guess we can take a peek here. It uh, looks like he had a solid 20 seconds, so time wasn't even that big of an issue, and oftentimes it's going to be what gets you on these types of attacks, so nice stuff to Edox. Uh, two more attacks to show. Got one fun one coming up. I'm not sure if this is it. No, it's going to be the next one. This actually was also a fun attack, um, so two kind of cool attacks to finish us off here. Um, typical army composition, but what he does with these ice wizards is very nice. Um, clearing out a compartment so the golem will retarget. Now, his only mistake here is if you take a look at how he dropped the golems, this one was higher up, this one lower down. He wants to enter up at the top of the base, so the way he dropped the golem, it's going to target this wizard tower next. So the golem's actually going to walk the wrong way on the right side there, which is a little bit unfortunate because um, he won't get much more value from the golem besides that initial compartment. But the top golem does its job. It'll actually head towards the top, along with his third golem making its way on in. And just look at how 
nice the funneling is for this base, which is otherwise pretty wide. And you'd have these two archer tower compartments right here uh, flanking his defenses as they moved in. Now with just those ice wizards and golems, he is able to avoid that. And he would have had three um, decent health golems moving into the base um, at the top there if that one golem had been placed a little bit better. Um, but that's kind of unfortunate. He doesn't need it though. He has plenty of... Uh, Plenty of, how should I say it, a lot of stuff in his kill squad. Um, couldn't figure out what I was trying to say there. He still has a plenty big kill squad to move through the base and take out the core, get those expos, and now just a very light hog uh, combination on the back here with just one heal spell. Um, he went ahead and used two jump spells, which is sometimes needed to move your kill squad through the base. It just means you have to be able to take out more of the base so you can afford to only get away with one heal spell, uh, which he's definitely able to do, especially when there's not many giant bombs. These hogs kind of just uh, bounce between defenses. Wizard towers actually tend to force heals more than point defense. You can get away without some heals um, as long as you have enough hogs if it's just point defense, but if it's wizard towers and giant bombs, that tends to warrant the heal, if anything. Um, the skelly traps, it's not going to be the straight up cannons and archer towers that force the heals as much, um, contrary to what you might think. So important point to, to make there. Okay, one more base. Like I said, this is going to be a fun one. Um, it is a baby dragon attack and very, very, very nice use of ice wizards. Um, probably even better than the last attack, just because um, the last attack had that one little hiccup in it. Drops down the golem, and two ice wizards will get those point defense very easily. These ice wizards do a lot of damage. In Clash Royale, they didn't do that much damage, uh, but in, in Clash of Clans, they do like the same amount of damage as a regular wizard, so they are very powerful if you use them correctly. So check out how he's going to use this golem right here. He already took out two defenses, now steps up, takes another two defenses out. The golem comes around the base to this mortar. He'll get that cannon as well, so he grabs... Uh, five defenses, one of them was an air defense, but you know, still is important for golem pathing, grabs all those defenses and now has this nice funnel on the left side, great entry, the queen will shoot down that wizard tower, then come in, perfect, perfect, perfect funneling, nowhere for his troops to go but into the base, nice poisons, and you can also see he's getting all air defenses taken out. Now my only gripe with this attack is how late his baby dragons were. He's dropping these guys very, very late. Um, they should already be down by now in the corners, and then you work your way around. But um, he actually waits for most of his kill squad to die before these dra baby dragons get going. And the, the problem with doing that is that you can run out of time. It's very easy to run out of time with this attack. And also that you don't get the benefit of mutual tanking um, and overwhelming the defenses. Because right now he's just starting these baby dragons that should have already been down ahead of time. Um, I love the ice wizards, though. <laughs> uh, as that baby dragon's tanking, Ice Wizard on the Archer Tower. Um, th this Ice Wizard edition can transform some Town Hall 9 attacks if you use them right. Um, just it's, it's like sprinkling in a hog, but it's one less troop space, and you have the extra range, and it does more damage than a hog. So you get all these benefits of being able to um, take advantage of distracted defenses and take them out very efficiently. So drops in this last Ice Wizard, but has plenty of baby dragons despite being so late with the deployment. Uh, skelly spell as well, which is even better um, for these distracted defenses. You drop in the skelly spell and they can just overwhelm the defensive buildings and take them out. So nice job on the cannon there, cannon archer tower combo. All that's left is just an archer tower and a Tesla that can hurt those baby dragons and they'll go down very quickly. So a lot of troops left up. Like I said, it would have deployed the baby dragons earlier, but still great concept for the attack. Very nice execution and the ice wizards made it all possible. So Hope you guys like this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you can use these ice wizards in your attacks and maybe get some good value from them and also maybe even pull off a 9v10 if you think you have what it takes. It's difficult, but try to use that mass laloon we saw at the beginning of this video. So that'll do it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bisectatron out.